Hello and welcome to today's contact will be on the Igion raid. Since it has been announced early, this means I am able to make this video as well as get the information out early. And yeah, the raid item for this specifically is going to be the Azure Dragon's Armor, which only, I believe, only Dragoons can use. However, it has some very good, cool kind of special effects, which has like a lot of HP, as well as HP percentage, as well as like resistance to, I think, Berserk and Charm. But yeah kind of neat to have and especially if you're going to run Oberon this can be a potentially a very good armor for him in that situation but yeah this raid is going to be coming out I believe on November 10th this is just getting the information out early because it was officially announced to be coming out at this like literally on November 10th because Gumi released the schedule that's why I this is why I'm releasing out the video much earlier than usual but yeah without further ado let's begin Alright, first things first, for the raid, which is going to be Aegion, um, it's going to be specifically weak to Pierce and Earth. Obviously, it's going to be Oberon's raid for him, just literally going to be very good for him. 10% um, to water, so sorry, Glaciella is not going to have a good time here. And then 0% to all other elements, so you can bring other Pierce damage types. From here, it's going to be Strike damage to 10%, Slash and Pierce at 50 uh, uh, not Pierce, sorry, Missile. Missile and Slash are going to be 15%, and then Magic at 25%. Um, the defense and spirit is going to be 20 defense and spirit at 30 at level 100. However, this is on Ward of Kelk side and it has faith of 70. However, I have to say, this is very important to say, Japan's side of things, they, their official picture at level 100, Igon has 40 defense and 40 spirit, which is a huge difference compared to 20 defense and 30 spirit. That's why I have I posted both these information. If it's 40-40 for defense and spirit, it's gonna be a much more difficult and harder raid. And I geared towards recommending the units towards 40 defense and 40 spirit because it's preparing for a much harder fight rather than what you, can you possibly fit into the fight instead. So I hope that makes sense on why I have the picture there. Because literally on Japan side of things, their picture literally shows 40 defense, 40 spirit. On the website uh, itself, it says 20 defense and 30 spirit. However, uh, Masomi, I believe, uh, literally like mentioned it to me. And then I did my research and literally, yes, Japan side of things, they did have 40 defense and 40 spirit. So we'll have to see. Anyways, what you want to bring is going to be pierce damage in general, earth types or earth pierce overall. And then you definitely want to bring defense and spirit penetration or debuffs, like literally. Penetration and debuffs will be very important in this fight. Um, the boss itself does not have any important debuff or imperial resistances, so you can literally kind of bring whatever you want in terms of like extra stuff. I will say though, in terms of like status elements, most of them are not going to be quite useful uh, against Igion, so don't worry too much about it. Um, for Esper with Lightning or Machine Killer, you're going to have Death Machine, the Freezes, uh, Scorpion. And then we have Titan, but Titan does not necessarily have the three star form yet. However, it's still useful. Outside of these espers, you can always just use like a elemental esper in terms of like your element, uh, what is it? Your your element attack modifiers, which can just be the same pretty much. These are just to help in terms of if you do or don't have espers. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Damage you will take is gonna be magic attack types with no element attributes. So just magic damage in general. And then there is a typeless, not not typeless, but like, I guess typeless, but does have element. Yeah, yeah. So typeless, but does have element of lightning that can also cause paralysis. So you, you're you obviously gonna bring, uh, what is it? Some spirit and or um, paralysis resistance at the same time. And then there is gonna be a physical attack that is gonna be hitting towards the strike type damage. So yeah, overall, this is gonna be for specifically Igion. Now, setting up for this raid, and highly recommend the units with the elemental advantage, Oberon obviously is going to be very very good into this boss. Not only does he have his own limit break, he also has the earth imperil as well as um, pierce imperil. So yeah, he can literally destroy this boss if it comes to it. Uh, he, you will be, you should, and you will probably be using the his defense penetration passive. Like that is not going to be uh, like literally. Even if you did all the other imperils, but you still don't have defense penetration, it will be kind of beefy. But because he does have access to it, so he'll be fine. From here, Zazan not only does he have slash resistance penetration, he also has very high defense penetration if he uses triple split from behind. So yeah, he will be a very viable asset in terms of just raw DPS for Earth units. From here, um, actually, Halloween Frederica is actually going to be a very good 
against this boss specifically. Not only does she have decent resistances against it, she also has a defense down by 30. So yeah, it, as long as you can bring like Solitary Lion or something with her for the slash resistance penetration, as well as she has her own defense uh, debuffs against the boss, she will do fantastic against this boss. Um, and then lastly, because I only wanted to do like top 4 in my opinion, we have Summer Lilith. Lilith not only has access to the Platinum Bow to further increase her defense penetration, she also has a Missile in Peril. So the positive Missile Resistance that Igon does have can easily be shredded by uh, Summer Lilith's uh, Limit Break if you do have that situation. So yeah, they will, these 4 units in particular will do very well against the boss. Now, highly recommended units that either have strong attack types and or resistances, 9S, keep in mind here, 9S is very good because he does have his Pierce in Peril, but you have to use the Clairvoyant Astrologer Vision card if you're going to use 9S for the Armor Piercer. If you do not bring it, 9S has to use his Limit Break before he has Defense Penetration, otherwise it's not going to be very pretty fighting against a possible 40 defense with 9S. But yeah, 9S can do very capable damage if you do happen to bring the Astrologer Vision card and he has his EX ability that can lower Pierce Resistance. If he uses both in tandem, then he will do excellent damage. From here, Cloud is, Cloud is unique because he is the one that can easily reach 70 to 100% defense penetration very easily, as well as his Braver is going to be very strong against uh, Igaian overall just to lower the slash resistance. And then Cloud also has Paralysis resistance as well as Cross Slash dealing insane damage after you use a Braver. He'll be just fine. He will literally shred through the boss. Now, specifically 2B and Camilo. Um, they're not going to necessarily do insane damage, however since they have very strong pierce attack uh, abilities, they will do very capable damage. Keep in mind specifically that if um, Camilo, if you wanted to deal even more damage, obviously the Astrologer Vision Card would be very good, but he does have options for um, what is it, the Shinra Bengal for 50% defense penetration, or he can use the Armor Piercer itself, or just using his passive for 40%, he, he's a little bit more flexible uh, compared to 9s. But I will say 9s does have better potential because of the pierce resistance in peril that 9s has. But yeah, these units overall can either do very good pierce damage or they're able to pierce through high defense very easily, which for example in this situation is going to be Cloud specifically. Now equipment you want to consider. White Marshmallow has very good paralysis resistance and has enough which is you need minimum 25% so that you will never get paralysis by the boss. Emblem of Devouring and Jeweled Ring, I believe their peak is 20% Paralysis Resistance, so you still have a 5% base chance of Paralysis, so keep that in mind. From here, you want either a Defense Penetration or Spirit Penetration to like a very high degree if possible. So Old Owen's Apron is going to be very good for that for people who could use it. Shinra Bengal does only adds 10, but that's better than nothing. Like seriously, it's better than nothing. Or you can use the, I believe it's the Silver Rimmed Glasses, which can add, I believe, 20 Spirit Resistant, I mean Spirit resi spirit Penetration, excuse me. So yeah, if you did want to bring like a, a Magic user, such as even like Helena herself, or like Elena, like just because she has very high Spirit and uh, Slash Resistance Penetration, using the Glasses will also help in terms of dealing more damage. But yeah, vision cards to consider. Obviously, Pierce overall is going to be like very good. So the Demon Wall and dashing through the snow is over here. Specifically, Clairvoyant is going to be very good. Clairvoyant Astrologer, mostly because all Spear slash Dragoon users can use this. And because Igon overall is weak to Pierce attacks, Astrologer is going to be very, very useful in like a lot of circumstances. Because it also has Armor Piercer as a vision ability card. So yeah, seriously, like I just have to say Astrologer is going to be very good. From here, if you just want generic like defensive setups and or just overall stats, Fenrir is going to be good so you don't take too much magic attack type damage. You'll, you're going to be hit mostly by either the lightning type list attack or just the strike damage. So, so yeah, even if you do have defenses, like eh, you should try to focus more on offenses because this boss is very, very beefy. From here, we have the Omega one, similar kind of like um, Fenrir, just going to be mostly for the magic attack resistance. Or if you really want to just dark slash it up, because obviously you can, obviously, like... Ruin Stern, Dwayne, Helena, and you just use her Spellblade sub job. Like you're, you're gonna, have, you'll be fine as long as you just have the spirit proper defense and spirit penetration or debuffs. You'll be fine. Here we are for the rare raid. I believe it is called the White Dragon. But yeah, from here it's gonna be weak to Pierce by negative fifty percent, and then negative ten percent to Dark, zero percent to Strike, fifteen percent to Missile and Slash, and thirty percent to Magic. From here, all other elements are gonna be zero percent. So as you can see, they really want to push either Dark or Pierce units to be attacking this boss specifically. Something that Obron can easily kind of handle because of Pierce. 
Um, the boss itself is going to have, I believe, 10 defense and 0 spirit at level one, uh, level 10, I believe. That's what the rare rate is. And the faith is going to be 75, so magic damage will be decently good on the boss. From here, from Japan side of things, um, it does say the boss is able to be slept as well as paralyzed. So, um, specifically on the website for War of the Cal uh, War of the Visions Calc, it says it has resistances to these. However, from Japan side of things, it does show that it can be slept or uh, paralysis. So just keep that in mind that you could possibly bring those if we do have the same thing once we see it. You can obviously bring up the menu in game once the raid is out and check just in case for yourself. But what you want to bring specifically for this boss overall is going to be pierce damage in general, dark elements in general, dark pierce, dark strike, and dark slash. Even at 15% slash resistance, you'll still have a good time with dark slash. Um, so defense and spirit debuffs are going to be very good, imperils, magic killer, and magic barrier break. Because the boss does put a magic barrier on itself, if you're able to break it very quickly, then you don't have to worry too much about dealing like mitigated damage from magic dealers. For damage and statuses you will take, however, it's going to be light magic attack types as well as immobilize, and then it will lower your spirit, uh, it has spirit down debuff, as well as a light imperil. You know what this means? Dark units overall are going to take a lot of damage, so you have to have a really good defensive setup. From here, espers with dark or slash uh, dragon like light killer. For the UR versions, obviously uh, Diablo, um, Omega, Two-Headed Dragon are going to be very good. Demon Wall is still it does not have its three star yet. However, it does have Light Killer, so you could definitely use that. There are also other MR experts that are very good if you do have them accessible to you. So yeah, use them if you can. Obviously, if you don't have any of those, just use your best elemental like damaging esper for yourself, and that'll be just fine. And here we are for setting up the rear raid. Um, before I do, I will say I hope I didn't say it, but. You don't need penetration for this boss, you need more debuffs for defense and spirit. Because it has low defense, like only 10 defense and like 0 spirit. Debuffs can make it go negative, which is going to be much better. And penetration can't really penetrate through 0 because it's just 0, so it doesn't make sense. But yeah, you get the point. But yeah, setting up for the rare raid, highly recommended units for elemental advantage. Obviously, Dwayne is going to be very good. Not only does he have good magic attack resistance, but he also has um, elemental imperil as well as... Was it slash in peril? So yeah, he can do very good damage to the boss. Um, Helena specifically, if you do not have Cypress Pile as the staff, it is better. It, well, I mean, if you don't have any magic attack penetration on top of like for items, then it's better for her to just use her slash um, spellblade abilities onto the boss for additional light killer and just doing slash magic damage instead. So yeah, she also has very good magic attack resistance, so she won't be taken down as easily compared to others. Now, Lamiga is here, if you do happen to pull him, I mean, not pull him, but like uh, collect his um, selection quest very quickly, then he will actually be a very good um, a unit to use in this raid, because he does have a defense down by 30 if you do EX him, and he can hit very hard with the 0% um, attack resistance from strike, so he will be able to definitely hit, like, not necessarily a weak spot, but very good spot against, like a very effective spot against the boss. So yeah, he will be very good against the rare raid. Now. I know I put Kane here. The reason why I put Kane here and not like Venera or like Rune Stern and such like that is because Rune Stern and Venera have very, very weak magic attack resistance, even with a proper setup. And because the boss is going to lower it, like do a lot of magic damage overall, they really have to watch out in terms of survivability. Kane not only is dark and pierced, so he's hitting two weak spots at once. He also not only has guts, but also has not as low of a magic attack resistance compared to the other units. I know he's not EX. However, he still is capable of dealing very good damage only because he has both a dark element as well as pierce attacks that are very strong. So just keep that in mind. Now, strongly recommend the units for strong attack types or resistances. It's literally almost the exact same, but you don't see cloud here anymore. Specifically because, I mean, it doesn't have too much defense or spirit that you have to penetrate through. And these guys are all very efficient at their pierce damage if they wanted to deal it. Especially 9S in particular, because he does not have to worry too much about defense. You don't even have to use astrologer, like clairvoyant astrologer here with him if you want. Like, he can just deal very good, capable damage. Obviously, Obron will be smashing this boss because he was literally made for it, but yeah, you get the point. 
I don't want to kind of repeat why Camilo and Tubi are still going to be here, so I'll just leave it be. And equipment to consider. If you do happen to bring a light unit, light bracer will be very good in terms of mitigating damage. Otherwise, you want to bring smart robe, knight's armor, Thancred's TMR, or even Titus's necklace just for that magic attack resistance up as well as spirit gains. From here, if you really want to push Helena like for just damage, because she obviously you know she'll do high damage, um, you can use the Fury Surge um, ability on uh, Garvel's TMR because she will get magic attack resistance penetration to a very high degree and it won't even matter for at least 3 turns while she has it on. Otherwise, Soul of the Masa is very good in terms of not only increasing your own damage but also magic attack resistance. So yeah, that is something to think about. Vision cards you want to consider. If you're going to use a dark team, as I said before, since you're going to be taking a lot of light damage, Diablo for the light resistance is going to be very good and Omega vision card is going to be insanely good for the magic attack resistance. So yeah, those two combinations will be very effective at this boss. From here, the demon wall is specifically if you're going to be using Kane and or, I mean, it's going to be very good for Kane. And dashing through the snow or clairvoyant astrologer obviously is just going to be good in general for pierce users. And then we do have the Fenrir vision card if you're taking a little bit too much magic attack resistance. So yeah, obviously as you can see, the defensive setup is just going to be kind of flat. It's kind of like the same as the other one. You just don't want to be taking too much damage. If And if you are like struggling surviving, you should be using those defensive setups. But yeah, this is the end of the video. I hope you guys are all enjoying it. I do believe this raid is actually a little bit more difficult compared to the others. Mostly because they're kind of... I mean, if I Gion is really 40 defense and 40 spirit, just like the Japanese version, and we're not getting like a nerfed version or anything of it, then it really is a harder raid. I hope to see more people kind of like working together, help each other get that, like the recipes and medals and such. Otherwise, honestly, a lot of people probably do have Helena and if you just set her up with Spellblade as well as like either Light Resistance and a lot of Spirit up on her passive then she can take out the rare raid at least so you can leech that. But yeah overall this is the end of the raid well like discussion video analysis that I'm doing and hopefully it helps for people. But yeah since we come to the end of the video please leave a like comment or end or subscribe and since it is also going to be my birthday week I will be gone for a bit. I don't think anything's coming out so this is actually good timing in terms of War of Division content and because they announced their raid early so yeah I guess I'm free for a bit but yeah hope you guys enjoy raiding when it comes out on the 10th and yeah until the next video peace out